I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I went to see Romeo and Juliet with Tom Holland last night. And the reason why this is so unbelievable is because the tickets for this play are gold dust. They literally sold out within a couple of hours and I wasn't the lucky one to get the ticket that way. But I found a way to secure a ticket and I'm going to tell you everything in this video, how I managed to do that. But first, let's talk about the show. Besides Tom Holland, why is this show so special? Well, firstly, it is a Jamie Lloyd production and this means that that the classic of Romeo and Juliet is going to be put in a very modern minimalist style play. This is what Jamie Lloyd is known for and if you've seen Sunset Boulevard or The Effect you're gonna be able to recognize a few characteristics that are present in those plays as well such as minimal to no set, no costumes, a lot of camera work and kind of close-ups of the faces and projections on the stage using the whole theater as the stage rather than just the stage space and ultimately a big focus on actors and the words that are said which I can imagine is why a lot of actors find working on Jamie Lloyd's productions kind of like a badge of honor because it really puts acting as a craft at the center of attention. This version of Romeo and Juliet is very gritty, industrial, contemporary. They really leaned heavily into the darkness of this story rather than the lightness of the love that Romeo and Juliet feel towards each other. Some some people might love, some people might hate this kind of productions, but Jamie Lloyd's minimalist style has been pretty acclaimed and his latest revival of Sunset Boulevard got seven Olivia Awards. So it's definitely worth seeing at least one of his productions and if you can see Romeo and Juliet then I think it's going to be probably one of the best for you to experience this type of show with. Now let's talk about Tom Holland as Romeo. As you can imagine, Tom Holland brings that boyish energy to this character Character. And the first time we see him in a play, he has a black hood on, he looks like he's been crying, he looks very depressed and sad and a proper teenager who just doesn't know what to do with his life. And then we follow him on a journey of falling in love with Juliet and then we see a very gentle and smitten side of him. And then it takes us all the way to the end of the first act and the beginning of the second when he just turns into this very rage-filled man. Tom really moves with ease through all of these different stages of Romeo's character development and he's very relatable and believable and also Shakespearean English doesn't come across as something that is hard to understand what he's saying. It just feels like he's a modern kid talking about his experiences of life and love. It just naturally flows. His performance is pretty impressive especially because there are some scenes that are shot outside of the stage and he's kind of walking towards camera and talking at it. You can really tell that he's an amazing amazing screen actor because there's something about the stare that he has with the camera that just makes you freeze. If you were planning to catch Tom at the stage door, you will probably need to power through about 100 or 200 fans depending on the night. On a Friday night it was really busy. You don't really get to see Tom for a long time. He literally walks out of the stage door to a car and that's about 10-20 meters that he's walking, heavily guarded by security and he just waves at fans so no autographs, anything like that or at least not now when the play is still really hot and new so maybe towards the end of the run you might get a bit more lucky. Obviously I cannot talk about Romeo without mentioning his Juliet and fantastic Francesca Amuda Rivers is so good in her role and really brings gentle calm and sassy energy to Juliet which I loved. The chemistry between Tom and Francesca is off the charts especially in the scene that is traditionally performed at the balcony. Spoiler alert there is no balcony in this production. They are choosing a very different approach to normally theatrical Romeo and Juliet's ways of performance. They are very quiet, very focused on each other, borderline kind of ASMR whispering into each other's ears that they make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. You're like, am I actually meant to watch this? The way that they approach these characters is definitely more toned down and more modern and suited how young people in love would act today. In terms of other memorable roles and cast members, I would definitely call out Mercutio played by Joshua Alexander Williams. He brings such bouncy and fun vibe to the show because it is pretty dark and gloomy most of the time and his scenes are a little bit more lighter and really show banter between him and Romeo as well as the nurse who's played by Freema Adjiman. You might know her from Sense8 or Doctor Who. She is absolutely amazing and there are some really caring moments that she shares with Julia 
Juliet and kind of how she stands for Juliet in front of her father. All of these are beautifully captured on this big screen. And I do think because of those camera close-ups, you can see how amazing actors these people are because the way that they get teared up and the way that they are upset, every single line on their face shows that emotion. And this is where the mastery of this type of production lies. Another aspect of this production that impressed me so much is the sound quality. I have never been in a production where sound was so crisp and good. It literally felt like they're talking here in my ears. The sound isn't only great in terms of the production, but also the way that it intros you to the story. Basically, as soon as you open the door to the auditorium, you can hear this electronic gritty type of sound that is going in the background and it's a track that repeats itself. That repetitiveness make you feel like this is the pulsating heartbeat of the play. It is very gloomy and this kind of persists throughout the play while the whole play is pretty quiet. There are these very subtle sounds that are ambient setting rather than necessarily sounds for the sound's sake. Sometimes this quietness is contrasted with very loud and like splashy noises which make you jump out of your seat a little bit but that's all there to provoke the right effect. Generally speaking this is a pretty quiet show where actors aren't necessarily projecting outwards but they're more kind of keeping it to themselves and it feels like you're constantly eavesdropping on their conversations. They all have mics and these mics are magic. Honestly I don't know how they can isolate sound so well especially because there are some scenes that are shot outside of the theater as well but the sound is impeccable and it doesn't pick up any of that but it does pick up a lot of the breaths and just general kind of whispery style of talking and it makes you feel very close to the actors because of that. Paying so much attention to the sound just showcases how much they treated this production as almost a motion picture. And another thing that makes you feel like you're watching a movie is actually the presence of cameras and projections on stage. These are very close-up moments where characters are talking directly at the camera and they are so impactful and impressive. There is this big projection screen on the stage but it is kind of transparent and it is part of this gate. Kind of goes up and down and towards the back of the stage but what's so interesting about it is that at times it's almost invisible when they project the faces onto it because of how dark the background is and the way that the light is kind of dimmed. It looks like you can only see the faces and the rest is a little bit transparent. Honestly it sometimes borderline looks like a 3D hologram type of thing. This is next level in terms of the camera quality and the way the projections looked. With a lack of any intense blocking on choreography and lack of costumes, this feels a little bit more like a spoken word delivery of Shakespeare at times because uh, there are some scenes where they are also using microphones that are on mic stands and talking at the microphone to deliver certain lines and it really felt like I am at a spoken word act night and they are just delivering Shakespeare. I did enjoy this version of Romeo and Juliet because it is quite different to anything that I have seen before. I do like minimalist productions so I think this is why this kind of works for me but if you prefer a bit more luxurious sets and effects on stage this is not going to be the production that you are going to enjoy. I think this is more for people who don't mind that blend of theater and cinematography. Essentially that is what it boils down to. There are quite a lot of scenes that are projected. There is quite a lot of camera work involved. It does rely on debt to deliver the story. I do feel that I have witnessed something special especially with this cast especially with Tom Holland as Romeo and this being his return on the West End. I think that this production will go down in history as one of the most bold revivals of this Shakespeare's classic. If you are still with me and you want to know how you can go and see Romeo and Juliet then let me tell you a few tips and tricks in terms of securing tickets for this sold out show. The first and the most safe way to get these tickets is to go through official production channels which are website and theater. I have actually witnessed certain tickets being returned. It was box tickets for a few days throughout the run and there were 75 pounds each but the trick was you needed to buy both of them and I couldn't find anyone who was willing to splash 75 pounds with me so I needed to give a pass and these literally disappeared within half an hour. Throughout the production people will be returning the tickets and a lot of people will choose to do that through the theater website. If you're checking regularly enough you might be able to spot these. So maybe have a few reminders throughout the day maybe first thing when you wake up and in the middle of the day and towards the end of the day to check and you might be able to see some tickets available 
available and buy them that way. The second thing is to go to the box office and speak to people at the theater and ask when they're experiencing the highest number of returns, get some insights from them, maybe you can even give them a call and then you can either come to the theater and queue up before matinee performance or evening performance or simply gather as much information from them and then they can tell you a few tips and tricks on how you will be able to go and see this show. But these two are 100% guaranteed that the tickets that you get are the tickets that you can use to enter the theater. I didn't manage to secure my tickets through the official channel so I went to consumer to consumer resellers which are websites such as Twikids and the app Ticket Swap. None of these are affiliated. I was just keeping an eye on both of these platforms to see what the prices are like and how often the tickets appear. I have downloaded Ticket Swap app and I have set the alert. So basically whenever the new ticket becomes available they would send me a notification and this is exactly how I managed to secure a ticket. There was one ticket that was available. I got the notification because my phone is in my hand, clicked on it and it was a £65 ticket for a upper circle seat C3. To be fair I was a bit nervous so my recommendation for this is do not invest money that you are not ready to lose because as you might be aware resellers and reselling websites are always tricky especially when there is no way to verify if these tickets are right or if they're uploading it to multiple websites so be extremely careful with that especially because Tom Holland is on the bill. This option is the riskiest but in my experience it worked. Basically I have got the ticket it, paid for it and immediately it was downloaded onto the app and there was like a screenshot which I used with the QR code to enter the theater and voila I was in my seat and no one disturbed me because no one else had that seat in the house. But this brings me to the point about seating. This is a very small theater for a production of this interest. Not only that but this is a production that relies quite a lot on the front of the stage. There's also a little step where they tend to sit quite a lot. I would say they probably about 60% of the seats in the house have good view. The rest you will probably get some sort of limited view or you won't be able to see one of them when they're sitting down or something like that just because of the way that the production is set. If you need to pick a side seat then maybe go for the right side rather than the left because there's a lot more action happening to the left side of the stage. Let me know in the comments below if you are planning to see Romeo and Juliet but if you're just generally intrigued by Jamie Lloyd's productions then I suggest you go and see this video where I'm talking about Sunset Boulevard with Nicole Chazier.